you worship the most gracious God. Let's exalt the sustainer of the world, the sustainer of our life, the Lord our strength, the Lord our fountain, the Lord our hope, the Lord our glory. Can you give him praise? Say, Lord, I give you praise. I appreciate you, Jesus. I exalt you, Lord. I exalt you, Lord. I magnify you, Jesus. I acknowledge your goodness. I acknowledge your power. I acknowledge your great grace that is at work in my life. Take all the glory, Father. Take all the glory, Son. Take all the glory, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. my regard Gilele she Gilele she oh Father, we worship you. We stand in awe of you this morning. And we ask for your unusual visitation. Lord of every one of us. We ask for open heaven, open heaven on our lives. We ask for a touch from above. We ask, Lord, that you bring us in an encounter with your supernatural move. For transformation of our lives. For establishment of our steps. Lord, for realization of your great purposes for our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's be seated. You are blessed. If I go into the ministration this morning, I'd like to encourage many of us who are yet not very committed in some things in the church to join the prayer group. How many of you like the prayer group prayer? You like the prayer group? We need more armies there. And I want to beg of you that if you would like to make that decision before you leave the church this morning, you leave your name, your phone number, and give it to our pastor there, Pastor Sade Ajirotutu. Rise up. Uh, so that's Pastor Sade Ajirotutu. We want more young people vibrant youth in the prayer unit and I pray the Lord himself will speak to you in the name of Jesus I've been ministering this morning on a message that is titled walking in the grace can everybody say that I didn't say walking in grace I say walking in what in the grace the grace of God is not just grace. Walking in the grace. And we thank God for the Bible reading. I'm going to start from there this morning. 
the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 to 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 14. For the grace of God, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Hallelujah. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And, and I want to ask you, it appeared to all men. Are all men saved? You can't answer me. No. It appeared to them. But many are not awakened to connect. It appeared to them, but many don't recognize or spot it. That's why when Jesus was raised in Nazareth, by the time he returned in the power of the world, he wanted to visit where he belonged and show the grace, the power, the glory, the majesty of God. Unfortunately, the city didn't recognize it. And the Bible then gave us a record that he couldn't perform many miracles there. I mean, why? Because to them, is the son of what? Of the carpenter. I'm going to be speaking about the grace of God today. And then the purpose of the grace and how to walk in the grace. Your responsibility in the grace. Let me begin by saying that all about Jesus and all about his sacrifice on the cross is the grace. The capsule of God's grace is found in the gift of Christ to the world and in his submission to be sacrificed to pay the bill, open the heaven upon our life and create platform. For a connection to God. When you are thinking about the grace. Look at Jesus. Look at the cross. Look at the precious blood he shed. Look at the affliction he carried. And that's why when the Bible looked at it. In the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 8 and verse 9. It said for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know the grace. For you know the grace. Not just grace. The grace. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich. Yet for your sake. He became poor. That you through his poverty may be what? Somebody may become rich. So I'm starting by telling you that. When we are talking about the grace. We are talking about what Jesus means to our life. What Jesus. The grand Jesus has captured for us. The battle he has won over your life. The blessing he has unleashed upon us. The grace. And let me move further now and say that everything that is good in man, in us, comes by grace. Everything. If there is anything good in you, it comes by what? Everybody? Man in his human, natural, carnal being is evil, wicked, self-centered, live ruinous life. Actually, man in his estate live to destroy grace. That's why Adam wasted and destroyed grace. In human nature, you can't make anything good out of life. And when you begin to reflect on who you were before you met Christ, you understand what I'm talking about. When you see a man in his human nature, in his natural being, 
is actually good for nothing. That's why you, some of them, you put them in wedge and they wreck it. They bring it down. Because they, they can't bring good out of any good. Man, created by God, doesn't know how to bring good out of what is good. It's as bad as that. I imagine you waking up and they handed over a palace to you and just told you in this palace we have so many buildings but that building don't enter it. And one day a stranger came to you, why did that man who gave you everything say you should not enter and you go inside. I'm just giving you illustration. You know the story in the garden. Praise the Lord. So everything, now begin to look at yourself. Every good thing in you, every good thing in you, every great thing in you is not acquired by you. They are wired into you by grace. By grace. They are wired into your life by grace. You will see that it was by grace that your eyes of understanding was opened. It is grace that awakened us to know Jesus. Sometime among all your family children, you suddenly accepted Christ. In the beginning, they may even be looking at you, SU, SB, whatever name they call you. But by you, the light comes inside. To all of them. And one by one, they started catching the light because you connected. Hallelujah. By grace. So, let me submit this morning that it is the grace of God that actually opened our eyes. We didn't have potential to be obedient children. We didn't have potential to love anything. It was grace of God that awakened us, quickened us to accept Jesus and become saved. So, and that's why Ephesians chapter 2 verse says, for by grace you are what? You are saved. He said, it is not even of yourself. Amen. Amen. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is what? The gift. It's the gift. It's the gift. Not even that you are qualify or good or work or wanted it but gift is the gift a composer gave us a song said I am saved 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 by his wonderful grace Yes, I am freed from sins. I've been born again. I am saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. By His wonderful grace, I am held to the glory land I repeat it I am saved 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 by his wonderful grace I am free from sin I've been born again. I am saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. By His wonderful grace, I am heading for the glory land. In a stanza, I don't know it very well, but I'll try. The devil cannot take me away.
from Jesus who saved my life. That devil cannot pluck me away from Jesus who saved my soul. Whatever may be, I will make it to the hand. I'm heading for the glory line. I am saved. I am saved. Saved. Saved by His wonderful grace. I am free from sin. I've been born again. I am saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. By His wonderful grace, I am happy on the we get there in the name of Jesus. So the Bible taught us that we were saved by grace not of ourselves. It is the gift of the Lord. And in that salvation is justification. All because of Jesus you say yes, I've been justified. Marked out of condemnation. Without paying a price. In this section of the message, I want you to appreciate as I communicate and think deeply with God. Think about those sins you have committed. In that salvation, your sins were forgiven. Listen to me. Many have killed another person. Hello? And in the law of God, what is written there is that whatever a man sow, what should happen? He should reap it. But when you are saved, God said you won't reap what you have sown again. I am not only forgiving you, I am blotting out what? Your sin. Is somebody in, the, in, the, in this church today listening to me? Is somebody online listening to the Holy Spirit? In salvation, God not only forgives, he takes away the sin. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you stand before God as if you've never committed the sin. Is somebody hearing? As if you, it never happened. Now the power in Christ and in his blood. It, brought, it brings you out. And stand and say, nobody talk to this man and make him to begin to account for the evil he has done before again. That is salvation. That's, that's the grace we are talking about. How do you explain that? How will you explain somebody just coming and, and the person you have killed, God didn't mind. Look at the way God brought David out. You begin to wonder, what about the life of Uriah? But grace brought him. Grace promoted him. Grace planted him to face his destiny. In a Bible study, people are saying, the mystery of our faith is that you must stand with God and don't let somebody kill you because if the person killed you and he gets to know the Lord, what he has done against your life will be forgiven and forgotten forever. You are on your own. It's a mystery on which you cannot question the Almighty in his grace of mercy. It's a mystery. That's why somebody, a robber like Kyle De William, can start and become an evangelist again. Men in their days, they would take gun, they enter bank and say, Manager, yeah, open your mouth. And they will put a bullet inside and it's blown off and they will carry money and go. And then he got to know Jesus and became an evangelist. The grace of God 
is unspeakable. It's unexplainable. Amen. You can't describe it. It's so deep. You can't go under it. It's so high. You can't go above it. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. Hallelujah. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. Hey, so high. You can't go about it so low. You can't go under it so wide. You can't go higher and it. Oh, wonderful love. Jesus' love. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. Hallelujah. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love. Very wonderful, oh wonderful love. Amen. Now look at the book of Luke, chapter 15, and verse 17. You see the capture of what I mean by grace. Luke 15, 17. The Bible says, But when he came to himself, look at grace. This is somebody who woke up one day very rude. Very unsubmissive, very disobedient, prodigal child went to his father. I need everything that belongs to me here. I can manage my life. You can imagine, how do you feel when your child says, I know what I am doing? I can manage my life myself. And the father gave him everything that belonged to him and he wasted it. What that, that parable is saying that even the destiny of the prodigal son has already been what? Wasted. Everything good about his life that was provided by that heritage, wasted. But when the grace of God came to him, what happened? The Bible says something quickened him inside. I am ministering today, I command whatever hold your heart, whatever hold your spirit, whatever hold your being, I command a quickening from heaven. And declare every strange hold on your destiny is broken today. Every waste of life, the amnesty over your life is overthrown now. In the name of Jesus, any power or any human being working for the kingdom of darkness to bury God's purpose for your life, today the Lord clear them and bury them. For you to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Suddenly something touched him inside the strange hold of darkness. Inside that terrible covering on his life. And the Bible said he came to himself. May somebody come to himself today. May somebody say enough for following the devil this morning. In the name of Jesus. He came to himself and said, Baba ye, Baba Lani, good sepani. He said, how many of my, what? My father's hired servant. He started seeing the difference between his father's house and in the hand of the devil where he was. Life is better with my father than where I brought myself. He said, my higher, not the, not the children of the father, even the higher servant, have enough bread to eat, to spare, and I'm perishing here. My eyes of understanding is opened. I am going back. And look at that creative touch. When a man is quickened, the good thing in him comes forth. He said, I'm going now to my father. I will tell my father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. 
I am no longer worthy to be called your child. But just make me one of what? Of your hired servants. And in grace, he took a step. Today, you take a step. In the name of Jesus. He acted. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak to you to do something. You won't do it. He acted on that inspiration. On that small still voice that came to his heart. He took an action. And as he took that action, his condition changed. He got to his father rather than become a higher servant. What happened to him? He was fully restored. On the path of grace, that's what we call full restoration. Somebody hearing me? Grace brings full and total restoration. Actually, if you plug into grace of God, it terminates your past. Listen, that's why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, if you step properly into Christ and you stand inside, he said, all things, what happened to all things? They pass away. All things become what? They become new. All things. Had a different problem. Gone. All things. Is inappropriate response that sustains connection with the past. Am I communicating today? When we inappropriately respond to the grace of God, it sustains our past. It sustains the affliction of the past. It sustains the, the, the trauma of the past. It sustains the darkness of the past. In, when we inappropriately respond, to the grace of God. That boy respond totally. That boy, that boy broke the bridge. I, I am not, I don't belong here. There are places you don't belong that you carry yourself to. Places you are, where you are not supposed to be found. Because you want to be social. You want to be popular. You want people to know that you are, you are intelligent. You carry yourself to where you don't belong. And sometimes you come damaged. You come tampered with. You come defied. Children of Zion. I know you must have read Genesis 38. Where a lady went out and looked at the children of Zion. Can you remember? Instead of staying in the camp, he went out. By the time he was coming back, she has created crisis. And if you look at that story, that was where her story ended. I declare, your story will not end until you have fulfilled the purpose of God for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree today that the grace of God I'm speaking about awaken you to know. Awaken you to understand. Awaken you to see the Lord your God in the name of Jesus. I declare that grace lifts you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anybody in the house you want to step into that gate before I proceed in this message? You've been playing with the grace. I've been trying to within the wisdom God gave me to explain what Jesus did. You just step out. I don't belong in the way I, I've been running my life. I want to respond. I want to respond. If somebody there only goes to tell you, just walk to the altar and say, Jesus, I'm stepping in today. I mean it today. I mean it today. I am serious about it. I am not joking again. The prodigal son stepped out and Baba carried him. Actually, they threw a party for him. The party was so great that the one who didn't miss it at all was started jealousy. Feeling ah, me that I've been here. He never threw a party for me. Why this one? That is the power of response to grace. Sometimes God will begin to take care of you than somebody who never knew any evil. Why? Because you responded correctly. Can somebody say, Father, give me grace to respond correctly in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So I have tried to show you the grace. Now, and I, when I started, I told that everything that is good in us came by grace. Let me give you now in this section the practical example of all the good things that we carry that comes by grace. 
Because many times you tie the grace only to your redemption, deliverance from sin. But it's deeper. Let someone say it is deeper. Amen. Have you read the book of Judges before? Judges 15. Oh, sorry, Judges 13, verse 5. The book of Judges, chapter 10. We just want to see about four illustrations of the power that grace commands. I started, don't forget that statement. Everything that is good in us comes by grace. Judges 13, verse 5. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of what? Everybody? You are not with me loud and clear? Out of the hand of the Philistine. I think it is something that handed out from God. He handed it from God. From birth, when he was about to be conceived, a person was determined for his life by grace. Heavy anointing, which we don't have time to begin to look at. You know it. Abby, somebody who can carry the gate of the city. And every, a, when something alone rises up, nation runs. Because they don't run, they are dead. Not that they are going to die. die. They are already dead. Amen. Heavily loaded from the womb. Only God knows those things that were loaded in you. God has sent me this morning. Heaven is activating it today. In the name of Jesus. And I beg to declare by the spirit of God. Whatever you have missed in the way you conducted your life from your birth to this point. There is coming a restoration today. A reconnection by the hand of God's grace. In the name of Jesus. So grace loaded something from the womb. He woke up just saw that there is power. Anytime he say, hey, a peculiar anointing that is terrific manifests. Everything that is good in us comes by grace. And in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 to 17, if you start from Verse 10, you will hear about a woman who was in bitterness of soul. And the name is called Hannah. Was in bitterness of soul. He was, she was married into a family that is polygamous. The other woman just go in and bring forth. Just go in and do what? And he started asking, why me? Why will I be dry? Was in bitterness of soul. Was under terrible shame. And I'm talking about walking in the grace today. The woman stepped into the grace. And went to the God of heaven and earth. Who set up Silo. And knelt down before him. Hallelujah. And why he was praying with all of our strength. All of our wisdom. All of the grace of God upon our life. The man of God came in. The summary that is important this one is told him, your prayers are answered. And from that prayer, somewhere the first prophet came. Hallelujah. I think she heard that. What is that, somebody? Grace. Unspeakable grace. She then carried a baby whose name is known to today. Whose message is preached to today. Those ones that were coming, which were intimidating her, had no place. I can't remember any name. Go and read your Bible and come and tell me one of the names. Grace. So, sometimes grace can uniquely position. Grace, many times, can single you out and write you on a platform that nobody can explain. You can't fight grace when it is on a life. Amen. <laughs> you can't fight it. You can't fight it. Look at that great grace. He came forth like a baby. The law of science, of common sense, dictate that the environment under which you grow frames your life. He grew under a polluted peer group. Is somebody hearing me? Under terrible boys, bad boys. God called them evil. But something, I'm sorry, somewhere never took to any evil. Grace. There is a grace that covers from evil. 
It will be going around you, but you won't be aware it's there. Why? Grace. There's a grace that preserves. There's a grace that carries. It carries us about troubles of life, affliction of sin and evil. Who is talking to that grace this morning? Grace that preserves. Grace that carries a person above the pollution of his time. That grace that came on his life, which was commanded by God, insulated something. I'm uh, sorry, insulated somewhere. And grew. And the Bible said there was he had favor with man and with who? With God. And when he speaks, God did not allow any of his word to do what? To fall on. That's grace. Favor with man. Favor with God. And anytime he speaks, his word never goes out without a purpose. God, God will just take up the word and begin to make it work. Amen. He became so great that where he was living in Rama, anybody coming there to arrest him, what usually happened to them? Before they get to him, they become mad. They become what? It's in your Bible. There was one that wanted him arrested. What happened? He was going there to go and touch somebody. And he started removing his clothes. A great person. He lost his sense on the way because there is a fence and about. I declare grace of God unleash upon your life. Grace of God is great when it's at work on a life. Can somebody say in the name of Jesus, let loose on my life today the fullness of your grace. If you understand what I'm saying, I want you to continue to say it. Let loose today on my life the fullness of your grace. Let loose today on my life, oh God, the fullness of your grace. Let loose on my life the fullness of your grace. Kalia takakarabala malaga bababa. Rule kerebo samakanda la bariama. Le kato mosile moria. Let your grace be let loose of my life in an unquestionable way. La se katoni mahanda. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Pastor is the Old Testament pastor. He's preaching Old Testament. Then let's move to the book of Matthew chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. I know where I'm going there if I wrote wrong verse. Matthew chapter 1. Yeah. Verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible says now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. I ask you today, I think Mary wanted that child without marriage. Hey, damn alone. But just found himself pregnant. And let's let very sweet scripture. Let's look at the book of Luke, chapter 1, to see another account of it. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And we quickly read verse 26. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. So that we see the that was the first one I read was a, a summary. Now, here, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel went was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. God is sending an angel to you. I know you are not in the church. I say an angel is coming from heaven on a special visitation to your life. 
In the name of Jesus. You can imagine heaven dispatching an emissary to a, a lady. She wasn't praying. Maybe you say he has been fasting and say, God, come, come, come and fish. No, grace. God just opened a book and said, Today we are going to the house of Mary. We want to touch it, touch our life. And an angel was raised. Oh, yeah, be on assignment. Heaven is raising angel on assignment because of you in the name of Jesus. What I'm saying this morning will become a testimony for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There are angels God raised. They begin to argue for you without asking them to argue for you. They advocate for you. They decide you must be on a position. It is the one you should put there. You are not aware anybody is fighting for you. Why? Because heaven has raised them up. May such angel arise for the jobless in this church. In the mighty name of Jesus. For your job to change, may such angel be raised for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So he went to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice highly favored one rejoice highly favored one the lord is with you blessed are you i mean what she was singled out blessed are you favored are you lifted are you registered is your name forever as unique among women that's the power of grace when he turns in the direction of a person, is somebody in the house and say, Daddy, let me be favored among men. I don't want to be a complainer among men. I want to be one of those women who will be speaking about your grace, singing about your grace, singing about your mercy. Is somebody praying? Let me be favored among men. You are highly favored. That is the high wave of your favor. Don't let me begin to toil before I get married in life. Don't let me toil before I bring forth children. Is somebody praying this morning? I'm ministering to you. God has sent me to you this morning. Are you praying? Are you serious? Don't let me toil among women. Let me be highly favored. Get a room and shatter. Highly favored. Let me be favored. There is an high way for God's favor. I tap into it by grace under the covenant of the blood. Let me be favored. Let me be favored with long life. Let me be favored with good job in life. Oh, don't let me ever be stranded among men. Kelly Dahuka, Lika Ruma Sete, Lakalia Tomokori, Lande Gaboria, Masande Gaba. I receive high favor of God among men on the head. Oh, Kiremo Saita Kalabara. Are you looking at me or you are praying? Rose Katalaba. It's the Bible. God said, Blessed are you among women. Why won't you be blessed among men? Why won't you be blessed among women? The God of heaven has said, Blessed are you among women. Is the Lord alone. When God blesses you, nobody can question him. Nobody can query him. He's an unquestionable God. Say among men, Daddy, raise my head. Raise my head, Lord. Let what I do flourish in my hand. Let it bring forth fruit that are greater than what I can explain. You are the Lord, my God. I can't find anyone beside you. 
faithful father arise carry me by grace carry me by grace carry me Lord by grace carry me Lord by grace Lisekechele Maraba Roma Sakala Baba in Jesus most precious name we pray for you to know that what I'm reading about this woman is by grace look at verse 29 the Bible says when she saw him the messenger of good news the messenger of blessing the Bible says she was what if she had understanding and was actually intending to have it before she will jump at the angel. She was troubled at his sin. And consider what manner of greeting is this one. What is this? You shall be surprised. Are you with me today? The Lord will surprise you. In the name of Jesus. Then the angel took his time to educate her. Heaven will educate you. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And be behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. He, he, he was not even given an opportunity to reject it. You know, sometimes rain will be falling on your head. You can't run away. This is like it. There is nowhere to run. You are caught under favor. And God is saying, You are the candidate by fire by force that's the thing we saw here you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus he will be great and will be called the son of the highest hallelujah you will have such children great children I don't think you are in the church I say you will have great children <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Reigning children will be your portion. Amen. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and all his kingdom. And of all his kingdom there will be no end. That's eternity. Eternal reigning. Reigning perpetually without time. Amen. One woman brought forth a baby that keep raining forever. He rained terrestrial. Anywhere Jesus turned when he was born, doors were opening. Dead were raised. Sickness saw Jesus. They disappeared. Hey, he died. The grave rejected him. Come out. You don't belong here. He flew to heaven. Hallelujah. And seated on the right hand of the throne of grace. That was a peculiar peculiar gift that is carried. We have been praying about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember, can somebody say, Father, give me a peculiar gift this month. I receive a gift into my life. I thought you would be so serious about it. I didn't stop you. I said, pray for a peculiar gift. So you have the time. You have the time to pray. We are in the house of God. This is a destiny workstation. Say, Lord, I receive a peculiar gift. You can receive the gift of a child, the gift of a good job, Whatever gift that your brain can pick is left to you. Open check. Gifts of the Holy Ghost. Better grace to communicate you to my generation, Lord. Kindly in a room as Satan de Legeboria. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So I've shown you two dimensions of the grace. The grace of God that carries certain potential in us that you can't explain. They are, you, are just, you just found you, you are good. You are there. The gift is there. I've seen people when they are speaking, people's ears are open to listen because they have voice. They have the, the, the mastery of communicating, of putting things together, articulating information and communicating it. Grace. Now, every grace of God in your life that you don't recognize, I command them brought into your knowledge this morning. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I declare manifestations, manifestations, manifestations by the grace that has been put into your life. Manifestation, manifestation. Now, no grace in your life shall be wasted. Ever we create the platform for that grace to be relevant in the name of Jesus. Your head will not be able to stop it. Is somebody there? Your education will not be able to stop it. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The grace of God is great. You can't finish explaining it with human wisdom. It's too deep. That is the dimension of God that we enjoy free grace. It's a dimension of God that you cannot exhaust if you are a wise child. I declare me your eyes of understanding catch the revelation of this grace today in the name of Jesus. Now I move out of there. What is the purpose of God's grace? When God is here to show, just show people, me, I don't come, I don't arrive. Not like that. I just take three scriptures. Ephesians 2, 10. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Grace in us is to manifest good work. That's why it's the goodness of a man. When you see somebody sponsoring another person's child in school, and it's not waiting for any reward, it's the goodness of God. It's that dimension of God. It's given to us to impart life. It's given to us to show that there is a God in heaven that cares. Amen. It's given to us. You know when the Bible said that when the scripture of David said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not roll. It's given to us so that somebody there who knows the Lord never want again. Grace. Good works to impart. It's given to us a special agent of his intervention. Special agent of his intervention. Some of you, you are agent of intervention in the life of your wife, in the life of your husband. May you recognize it. Rather than become that agent, you run away. You amplify his weakness or our weakness and push them out for disgrace. You are an agent of intervention. As I'm speaking today, may your eyes of understanding be open to understand. In the name of Jesus. The grace is given to lift people, lift people, lift the society. Lift the kingdom. Promote his advancement, his revelation. To bring into reality dimensions of God that are yet unknown among men. That's why I say the honest expression of the says is waiting for the sons of God, waiting for men who will carry into reality things that God has spoken of old that is still waiting for agent to communicate them. Amen. Titus chapter two. I say three scriptures so that we move out of there. Titus chapter two, verse fourteen. Titus two fourteen. The scripture says, we've read this one, I'm reading it again. It says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people who are sealed for what? Good works again. You know, the Bible said, when they were talking about marriage in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, you know, all through from verse 22, they said, Jesus, the relationship of the husband and the wife, that husband should love his wife 
as Jesus loved the church that came for the church and carried a church, church like a bride, started taking care of the church to be able to present a spotless bride to God. Many of you marry, you are looking for a perfect wife. You don't want to walk. Abby? So when you see your real wife behaving like a human wife, instead of you walk on you say, I don't know it's like this. When you should roll your shirt, eh, Abby, the brain of boys is that my wife is the best. But when you get home, you see there is no best man. Everybody is work in progress. What is everybody? Everybody? We are work in progress and we are the agent to do the job. But many men are irresponsible. My wife is dirty. Then come in and go low and begin to teach her how to be compact the way you want. You can't teach anybody with pride. Nobody will listen to you. You come down to teach. You try to teach your child anyhow. They won't listen to you. You say, this is not a father. This is not a teacher. You lose them. We are agents of intervention. In the life of your friend, many times you are agent of it. To tell them that I say God in heaven. Rather than offer your body, you offer him Jesus. Or ah, Jesus. Agent of it. Good works. Because God is a good God. A loving God. And he wants to, actually in grace, you share the nature of God. Hallelujah. What happened to you in grace? Somebody? You share in grace, you share the reality and practicality of the nature of God. Amen. Can someone say in the name of Jesus? I hear pastor today. I share the grace of God. I share the nature of God. Rather, in grace, I share the nature of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First Peter chapter but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That you may proclaim, that you may display, that you may announce. Hallelujah. Let somebody say, I become a proclaimer, a showcase of the praise of God to my generation in the name of Jesus. A showcase of the power of God. A showcase of the glory of God. Are you there saying it with boldness? A showcase of the greatness of God. Of the possibilities of God. In my generation. In the name of Jesus. Listen very carefully to this. When you say all things are possible. That possibility is you. Expressed through you. It's supposed to be expressed through us. Praises of him. So people will say, oh, actually God is a good God. Can you see him inside him? And look at verse 10. He said, we who were once not a people, but are now people of God. We were useless people. I was born in a family where they carry masquerade. I grew up. You know, when they want to do masquerade, you know, there is a special room for the masquerade. I don't want to mention the name. All kinds of dirty clothes is on it. And anytime they want to go out during their festival, all the women will go and take their egg gear and tie it to the horn on the masquerade so that it can be beautiful. Beautiful egg gear, each of them will go and bring it from their wardrobe. And tie it. My mother will bring clothes. All other women in there, clothes everywhere. And we go out, they will be doing like this. All their heads here will be rolling like that. As a young boy growing up, those when they enter that room, I always, you know, you know the way a boy escape. 
Charlie super active person. I just enter through sometimes through the leg of somebody. I'm already inside. And I start saying what a young boy should not even get exposed to. But that God didn't even allow that to stop me from becoming a pastor today. Grace. The way, the, 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 the way I was exposed to it in my youth way, maybe I would have surrendered my life to begin to carry it. But God is saying, you, you have been elected. Elected. You are not permitted. I only watch. Sometimes I heard their food inside the place. And I hate it for nothing. Amen. Glory, nothing. They got nothing. Grace. That's what I said. Grace. It will speak for you. We are nothing as work. Grace will speak for your life. It will speak for your children. It will speak for your promotion. It will speak for your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Ah, come and see them. You can imagine somebody going to the bush and bring good, good flogging stick. And they'll be flogging themselves and still be rejoicing. You flogging yourself and you are rejoicing. Huh? Outside God is pain, is affliction. So we are graced to praise God everywhere at our workplace. God is waiting for somebody from this, this tribe of God who will stand in the office and say, We know you, you are a different Christian. We must raise people. When we were starting, God told us that. We will not only believe in the dominion of Christ, but we are going to take responsibility to do what? To manifest him. That's where the problem is. People don't manifest Jesus. They only say he's God, he's good, I'm born again, I'm a pastor. But when it comes to showcasing his glory, mass majority of Christians are failures. He didn't give his grace for nothing. Grace becomes useful when you manifest his glory by it. When you take advantage of grace to show forth the praises of God. Somebody say by covenant from today. The graces of God that have been placed on my life shall not be wasted. I will show forth the glory of the one who raised me up in Jesus name. Amen. And finally how do I walk in the grace? Simple, simple, simple point. Five points. I may not explain them deeply, but pick them seriously. This is your responsibility. If you want to live in grace and you see it never exhausted in your life. When I say walking in the grace, I'm talking about living grace-filled life. Grace-filled life. I'm talking about living graceful life. I'm talking about creating platform to carry grace of God in a way that no power can resist it on your destiny. There are simple steps, but it takes obedience children to walk in them. Number one, you must believe the word of God to the point that you build your life on it. <laughs> You must believe the word of God to the point that your life is built on it. When you are covenant minded to run your life by the word of God, the grace of God never leaves you alone forever. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. God said, I will liken you to a wise man if you build your house on what? On the rock. Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, it's not, you are, it's, you, you are, it's not yet a blessing when you hear God, but when you assemble and carry yourself to do what? To do it. That's why the doer is more blessed 
than the hearer. You sustain grace. You sustain God's power in your life when you promote your practical life to the point that it is driven by what? The word of God. The voice of God. The leading of the word of God is big thing. The truth, that I say, you will know the truth. The truth sets you free. So when you are free, to remain free, you must walk in the truth. Am I communicating? You are born again, free! But many don't enjoy it in a sustained way because they cannot live in the truth. Live on the truth. Listening to the voice of the master. For me to be preaching to you, I have to listen to the voice of the master. Sometimes I will sit down like that and be looking. Meditatively, the Bible is there. I may place my head on my Bible, listening to the voice of how do we communicate this to your children, Lord? And you begin to educate your mind by his spirit. You need that spirit in you that keeps speaking to you and you are responding to it. Very unfortunate sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak to a child of God and will not respond. Go and give that girl ten naira. You see, why should I give him? We are all students. He has his she has her allowance. I have my own. Why should I? And God close the heaven and say, Okay, don't give her. It will try you. God tries us to be sure you are usable to be sure you are a child that can obey go and do so 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 and you think, no, no, no. you hard but you don't respond the best place to grow in fact you have broken through when you believe the word of God and you are able to carry yourself in line with it as you are acting practically at workplace in your marriage in your studies following the word of God everyone is carrying you because anytime you are acting on God's word you are creating supernatural move you are commanding the move of God on your life because the word of God is God himself and when you are dancing around God, everything that is of God will manifest in your life. When your home is governed by his words, his presence pervades your life. When you want to lay a foundation, I want to get married and say, I must walk it by the word of God. Ah! God say, I have somebody to walk with. And he give you a model that you can enjoy, not endure in life let somebody say I hear you pastor may the Lord help you in the name of Jesus so believe the truth of the word of God and live by it live for the word of God respond to the voice of God that's the point number one I'm trying to show you amen Doing this is not in struggle. Why should you do that? You are doing it in gratitude. What do I say you are doing? I am grateful the one who saved my soul. Let me follow him. Who else do I listen to? I'm not going to be like Adam, listening to the voice of the stranger. It's not a struggle. It's that you are so grateful. I'm saved. A mini cutter. What did I do for God that he made me what I am? Because of that, I love him all my life. It's not a struggling thing. It's, a, it's an action driven by gratitude. Obedience to God should be driven by what? Everybody, gratitude. Not struggling, not feeling it's not good. It's gratitude. I've shown you that side. He is everything, everywhere for you. And then who should I listen to but him? Even when your flesh says, oh, I can't go that way. This Baba is too good for me to abandon. Amen. Gratitude gratitude out of the heart of gratitude you commit yourself to follow him to obey him to do his will because you know he is trustworthy he cannot fail amen he can never never fail 
It can never, never fail. Amen. It can never, never fail. Jesus, the same for Hallelujah. Amen. It can never, never fail. Oh, it can never, never fail. Jesus, the same for Amen. 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 Number two. You are walking in grace when you are praying and you believe your prayers. I'm not only asking you to pray, but you must, you know, I've been teaching about prayer. You must pray. It's so important. But you pray and do what, everybody? Believe your prayers. If that's the cocoa. Matthew 11, 28. Let's, uh, sorry, Mark 11, 28. The book of Mark 11 and verse 28. Uh, sorry, verse 24. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, what, what instruction is there? Everybody, can we read the last one? Believe that you receive them. And what will happen? You will have them. It's a very, people pray, but many times they don't believe. They don't believe their prayers. Immediately you finish praying, you start being afraid again. Instead of praising God, that's why now Domino can see when we do all the prayer, we say, Thank you, Father, because our prayers are what? Answered. You shouldn't think back because God does not honor doubt, He honors confidence in Himself. Believe. 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 This last Monday was the first day of resumption of children, and I felt I should do fellowship with them on the assembly. And we rented some sound system. We want to really praise God. We want to spend one hour of the day, the first hour in the school for the time from the Lord who has brought all of us back safely and who owns the remaining part of their life to carry it. And as we were gathering and reading, it appeared a drop of rain was coming. Ah, we must not be scattered. I didn't talk to anybody. I just stayed somewhere in my corner and I lifted up my two and daddy please we need platform to praise you today platform to praise you I was praying quiet I wasn't making noise we need platform suddenly I forgot I was praying I was dancing with Oluto Kunda came because we brought a singing mystery to we were dancing when we finished I then remember we prayed that rain should not fall something has carried it away that's how it should be you shouldn't be tomorrow as I'm showing you this place today, may the grace rest on you. Anytime you pray, if the devil wants to come, you say, Satan, I rebuke you. I have told my father, he's taking care of it. Because you are going to be tried. The common sense you will come and say, let's say, she said, then you rebuke that voice. Say, someone, you are rejected. I renounce you. I have told my father. And because with him all things are what? You prove to the devil why it will happen. You don't keep quiet and begin to believe on believing things, reeling to your thoughts after you have prayed. Actually, we are not enjoying God's miracle because we don't take a stand on the things we even do. You prayed. To a God. Are you praying to a man? You pray to the Almighty and you are still doubting. And say you are a believer. What kind of believer are you? I say when you pray, believe. Believe even your prayers. I met a woman yesterday. You know, dazed me. I will tell you why. I wanted to buy battery to the sensor of my car. You know, because the battery is getting weak. And well, if I don't do it quickly. <laughs> There is a risk of locking your key in the car. And as he said, he's going to sell I said, Mama, can't you sell it for me at social price? God is going to bless you. He said, Don't tell me that. I have mouth to tell God to bless me. You don't need to bless me. And I believe what she said. She has been trained that she doesn't need anybody to pray. She can pray for herself. She can pray for herself. 
Some other godly people will say, You want to pray for me? Yeah, yeah, pray for me. Remember, I pray for me. Haven't you seen people like that? As you need them, they forget a part of don't come. Their eyes for one night. And the money they put somewhere, they would have packed it away. Because you have failed to become a priest in your personal life. But the Redeemer of your soul say, Pray and do what? And believe. Believe it. Believe it. You will have it. You are to, that is dominion. You pray, you believe, you have it. Anywhere you stand, say, Father, we are on the way. Accident not permitted. Glory. And you sleep on the lap of God. Abby, who is able to secure better than anybody. It's not that you are still afraid. When, when driver press break, hey, hey, hey. and then your blood pressure begin to go up. Faithless. There is a God that carry. He will carry you. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Believe and hold the promises of God. God promise you. What are those promises? If you are somebody who work with God, some from point to point, God will be speaking to you. Like, I will do this for you. Don't worry. You are going to get married gloriously. And you hold it. You write that date down when you are praying, when God told you. And you hold it. Some of us don't even know when God says anything because you are never valuing what God is telling you. No value for the voice of God. When you see somebody God is speaking to who has no notebook to write, he doesn't value the voice of God. And where God's word is not valued, there can be no delivery of his miracle. Am I communicating? Somebody say, Father, give me wisdom. When the voice of God is not valued, no note is taken, and no reality of what God has said is ever experienced. You must believe the promises of God. You must hold. Then you say it won't happen. You say God said so, so, so to me. He has said it. He cannot fail. He's not a man that he what? Number twenty three nineteen. Say God is not a man that he will lie. He said as he spoken. And shall he not do it? And in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, he said, All promises of God are yea and what? And amen. Let all men be liar and let God forever be true. Believe the word of God, believe his promises concerning your life. He said that we he said that we never leave you. Know what? There are many times when you have problems. So seeing you here and there, you think God has left you forever. You are not a believer. You say, when you pass through fire, eh? if there was no fire, will he say that? When you pass through the water, I will do what? I will not allow the water to overflow you. When you pass through the fire, I won't allow it to do what? To burn you. That's your father. He didn't tell you fire will not come. Balance your knowledge of your father. And stand and say, he has told me this fire will not burn me. This water, I'm, I'm prevailing. I am an overcomer. Amen. My victory has been determined before I started the journey. That is the word of a child of God. My victory has been what? Determined. You are on the winning side. It's not that maybe you are going to win. You have been predetermined to be a winner. In the journey and the battles of life. Is that imprinted on your heart? Everything you face. Everyone has determined you to win. Even if you fail a subject today. You are still determined to win. Because you are, that failure is not the final. You won't be the first to fail. Many professors have failed. What is so you can have third class. You know what they call third class? And to back battle on which my failure at the dust, I want to call Skoka. Then to battle class. Are you with me? But it's a Nobel laureate today. Abby, I'm, I'm confronting you with things that you know. To make a top class make you a poor grade in school. But he ended up to rule the world in his feet. Let somebody say, Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to rule your word. 
Because the great hand of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus. So believe his promise. somebody believe the promises of God. Don't give up on God. He has promised. He won't fail you. He's too faithful to fail. Amen. Number four. Believe in who God has made you. I'm talking about walking in the grace. Grace is on you. Believe that grace that is on you. Believe in whom God has made you. He has made you a priest and a king unto himself. He has made you a royal priesthood to himself. He has made you a unique, special people, holy people. Believe in it and live it. Believe in who God has made you. Romans 8 37 will say, You are more than conqueror. Romans 8 37. You are more than you are walking in the grace when you know I am more than what? Conqueror. Not through my strength, but through what? Through who? Who loved me? Through Christ. I am more. I am more. Not that I'm a conqueror. I am more. You don't understand language. I am more. Everybody say, I am more. I'm not just a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. You are more. That's you are walking in the grace that I've discussed with you in a measure. At the beginning of this message, when you recognize who you are. Who he has made you when he died and rose again. You are more. Sometimes some problem will come as if it's going to consume. Say, sorry, you missed it. The job has been finished when Jesus hung where? On the cross. Head or tail here. Victory is my portion. That's why when you read some scripture, you know that it has been decided that a child of God is a winner. He said, if you drink any deadly thing, you have you shouldn't drink. You have taken. He said, it will not hurt you. It's a decision. Head or tail, you win it. <laughs> you wake up from a dream. You just finish a bowl of it, but you don't know who cook it in the dream. <laughs> All kind of strange, strange, strange animal on it, and you swallow them. And you just wake up. Ah, motuti jengwe gay modara o. Instead of you wake up, I say, come on, Satan, you miss it. Oh, you night caterer, you miss it. You wasted your effort because it is written. Even if I drink any deadly thing, what will happen? Hey, you are not there. You are not you are nullifying the assignment. Only God knows what it has caused them to come in. But you are reversing it. Standing on the word of God. You are more than what? A conqueror. You are more. Everybody say, I am more. Are you sure? You can't say it. Say, I am more than conqueror. Here I won't be stranded. Because the Lord is with me. Amen. Things are going to work for me. I can't hear you. They will work in my favor. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five. Which is the last point. Believe in the blessed hope. The blessed hope. That is the appearing of the Lord. Believe. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. Believe in the blessed hope. Titus 2 13. He said, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of who? Of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
you must believe that he is coming back again. You are walking in a complete grace of God when you know your journey is more than ever. Amalaka houses in the terrestrial region. There is an eternal dimension. Amen. You believe it and you are positioning yourself to be a partaker of eternity. That's walking in the grace because when he died, he died so that physical death on earth will not end your life. Am I communicating? It's a total package. That's why right. whoever believes him will not perish but have what? Eternal life. It's eternal covenant. Not terrestrial covenant. You are, will be a winner here and a winner there. Amen. Believe it. There is a crown waiting for you. There is a day of joy beyond the joy you know in the world at the feet of Christ. In those years, they will say, He's coming back again. My God is coming back again. He went away and promised that He's coming back again. He's coming back again. My God is coming back again. Ah, the glory. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. Rise up, come on. Yeah. He's coming back again. My God is coming back again. He went away. I promise that He's coming back again. Sound 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. On that day, you will not be missing. So there is more to your grace than terrestrial region. Am I communicating? There is eternal dimension. You will not miss it. Stretch forth your two hands to the Lord and say, Father, carry me by grace. Carry, uh, continue now. Come and let the spirit in you pray. Say, Lord, carry me by grace. Carry me, Lord. Across the bridge. Carry me. Don't let the enemy succeed over my life. When the prince of this world come, let him get nothing from my life. Carry me, Lord. By grace, I reign, I rule, I run, I fly, and I fulfill the purpose of God. I get to where he has ordained for me. I get to where he has ordained for me. Reni ketoli akaroma shandalaba Reni ketoli akromoshi la handaba Rokrejelebo like araba Are you praying? Ah! Carry me, Father Carry me Carry me Carry me La krete morikalima shandalaba Carry me, Lord Resha katala marabala malagaba Roke tali karuma shina handaba Roni ketebo are you tired of praying that is your prayer today carry me father let your grace speak over my life Hey Le katala malagaba baba Let me tell the story of grace in every aspect of my life let me have a testimony of grace by grace beautify my life with all the good things in your hand in heaven beautify my life Lord by your grace by your grace, said to me by your grace, said to me, Lord, by your grace, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I have spoken about the grace today on your life, it will not be wasted. Amen. The grace will speak for you, yes, it will speak for good heads. It will speak for longevity. It will speak for blessings. It will speak for great promotion that are beyond your certificates. In the name of Jesus. It will speak for your ministry. It will speak for your children. It will redefine your life. Are you there? It will redefine your life. In the name of Jesus, it will command high favor of God on your life. In the name of Jesus, in Nigeria, the grace of God will preserve you from the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus, whichever economy you are hearing me, 
the grace will carry you the grace will grant you establishment in the name of Jesus now from today I command open heaven by grace upon your life every naughty issue that you have been handling with struggle by grace they are delivered to you they are delivered to you in the name of Jesus the Lord make you glad in the name of Jesus the God of heaven help you the helper of Mary help you the one who show Mary favor show you favor things begin to work for you now in this week I ask for a testimony of grace in your life in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus most precious name we pray